Good morning. Good to see everyone today. So uh, this next season that we're going to be in as a church, the next eight weeks, it's going to look a little different to what we normally do. So we're starting this Alpha series. We just uh, watched one of the promo videos about Alpha. And uh, we have run Alpha as a church um, years ago, but also we did an online version recently. And, uh, but whenever I talk about Alpha to people, uh, there's a certain percentage, a high percentage of people that say, well, you know, I'd love to do it or I'd love to bring someone to it, but I just don't know what it's all about. I just, I'm just not sure. I'm just, you know, curious. But um, so my, my strategy here is to solve that once and for all for everyone, that we're all going to go through it together. So welcome. You have been automatically enlisted and signed up and registered without your knowledge <laughs> for Alpha. Okay. So as the promo video mentioned earlier on, this, the, the Alpha course is uh, something, it's, it's typically a small group curriculum, okay? It can, be, it can happen in a larger group context, but the idea is that you, if, you, if you've got a big group of people going through Alpha together, that you still break up into smaller groups to have discussions. So we're going to watch the first video today in just a minute, um, but, we go, but then we're not going to be doing this on a Sunday, but uh, our goal is next year we're going to start an Alpha small group. So between now and the next eight weeks, we're going to be getting familiar with the content. We're going to be praying. I want us to be considering, each of us to be considering, who has God put in our lives to reach out to? Just like that text message showed, to send a message or to, you know, in a face-to-face -face conversation to say to someone, like, would you be, you know, interested in attending this Alpha course? It's about Christianity. And, you know, I'm sure in that there'll be lots of no's, but there might be some yeses. Because you know what? We've got to have faith that God's at work in people's lives, right? We've got to have faith that God's at work in people's lives. So we're going to go through Alpha on Sundays, and we're all going to get a really good idea about what it's all about. And I want us to be imagining having conversations and discussions with friends, co-workers, neighbors, family members that perhaps maybe are, are you know, still growing in their faith or people who are exploring or asking questions about faith in Jesus. Actually, let me read today. I want to read a passage to you that's going to help highlight this. This is from Romans 10. Romans 10, verses 10 through 15. Let me pray before I read this. Lord Jesus, we just want to dedicate and commit this alpha season to you. Lord, would you, would you envision our church to have a missionary attitude that we would not consider ourselves just to be here to make ourselves feel good or just to be comfortable, that oh, this, this is a comfortable place to be, that we would actually move into a place of discomfort and that we would have a heart for those who are lost. That we wouldn't try and stay protected, we wouldn't view it as just being us against the world, but that we would see that you sent your son to die for sinners and that you've given us a mission. So Lord, help us, help us to be on your mission. I pray you'd really use Alpha in our church to be one of the ways that we become, we, we get more on mission. I pray it in Jesus' name, amen. Amen, Romans 10 verse uh, 10 says this, Apostle Paul writes, he says, for with the heart one believes and is justified, and with the mouth one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, Everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. That was a big deal to say that. For there is no distinction between Jew and Greek. We can think of all the divisions in our culture. There's no distinction. For the same Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call on him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. How then... Will they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how are they to believe in him of whom they have never heard? And how are they to hear without someone preaching? And how are they to preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who preach the good news. This is God's word. God's word is very confounding, confounds us in this one way by saying that feet can be beautiful. That's one very confounding way. Another small miracle that we can uh, give God glory for. The idea that it's a beautiful thing to bring the greatest news into people's lives. If you're a follower of Jesus, you are a witness. You have witnessed something. 
I'm a witness. I've witnessed something. I wasn't there 2,000 years ago in Jesus' life and ministry and death and resurrection, but by faith, I've come to believe that it's true through the words of Scripture, and most of us here, many of us here have as well, so we're witnesses. And as a church, we want to become more and more proactive, more and more convinced, more and more intentional about living into this identity that we are witnesses, that we testify to Jesus. And that doesn't make us popular in the world. That doesn't make us always likable. But we have faith that God is at work in people's lives. And, you know, there's a lot of Christians, we've lost a lot of ground in the culture. Not, I'm not talking about kind of the, the influence politically that, that Christianity has had culturally. I'm not, 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 not talking about that. I'm talking about the reputation of Christians, that we've lost a lot of ground. And so we're now in a place where it's very tempting for us to say, you know what, I'm just going to keep my faith, kind of keep it more private, and I'm just going to protect myself and be extra careful. And, you know, it's not really going to be a public display of faith. It's, you know, if people ask, maybe. But I'm just going to be very careful about what I say and what I do. And, of course, we have to be wise about what we say and what we do. But during this season where there's a lot of cultural division, there's a lot of things in the political realm that are happening, we actually need to ask God to grow our faith and our boldness. Say, let me not be afraid of people's opinions. Let me not be afraid of the consequences of shining the light of the grace of the gospel of Jesus, shining that light. Let me not be afraid of that. Let me be be as bold as a lion. So Alpha, here's my prayer, is that Alpha will become a rallying cry for us as a church. I want this to become something that is really a central aspect of our church ministry that we're, you know, not everyone will participate in it all the time, but I'm wanting wanting it to be something that we frequently do throughout the year, and that there's, there's a small part of each one of us or a growing part of each one of us that's always asking, you know, that next alpha, who could I invite to that? Who's in my life? Is there a neighbor? Is there a friend? Is there a relative? Is there a coworker? Who could it be? Who, who's God put in my life that he wants me to be bold and step out and ask and invite to it? Along these lines, we, we can't just take these steps and try this. We need to pray into it. We need to pray for this to happen. So between now and the end of the year, uh, I'm, I'm going to be launching this a, pr- a special prayer gathering on Sunday mornings. And I want to invite all of you to join me. I'm sure maybe three of you will. <laughs> I said a few weeks ago, American Christians don't know how to pray. So this is our opportunity to learn how to pray. So at 8 a.m., I'll, I'll be getting more information out about this, but starting at 8 a.m. every Sunday here in the building in one of the rooms uh, downstairs, we're going to have what I'm calling a revival prayer meeting. It's a little bit of a cheesy title, but I like it. I'm just, I'm, I'm just like, we, revivals, when you study revivals in history, they really, one of the things that happens in leading up to a, a revival is God's people get serious about prayer. They get serious about prayer. So we want to take, we, want, we, do, we don't want to just be people of prayer, though. We want to be people of action. You see that in the disciples. There were people of prayer and people of action. So we want to be people who are, we're going to be praying. So that prayer gathering is going to be about 45 minutes. So it'll be like 8 to 8.45 uh, here early. So get here early. Anyone's welcome to join. We're going to be, bring your kids. Yeah, bring whoever. Even in their PJs. Do you want to come in your PJs, Finley? To prayer? Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah, she agrees. <laughs> Call it what? Prayer, prayer PJs? Right, we're going to do prayer PJs. I'm going to stick with revival prayer. That's I feel, I feel good about revival prayer. So, But I am open to your suggestions, Akemony. So we're, going to be, we're, going to, we're really going to be stepping up our game here as a church. If this makes you feel uncomfortable, get over it. We're, we're, we're witnesses to the resurrection of Jesus. We're witnesses to the person of Jesus. There's nothing more important that we could be doing than bringing greater glory to the name of Jesus. So starting next Sunday, 8 a.m. downstairs, we're going to be doing revival prayer. You're welcome to join us. If, you don't, if you're not sure how to pray with a group of people, great opportunity to learn. We're going to be seeking God for a breakthrough, and then when, each Sunday we're going to be continuing to do Alpha, getting more um, familiar with it. You're welcome to invite people to this Sunday series, uh, but that, that'd be fine. But really, we're looking to, early next year, to start a small group that's specifically so we can do discussion. We can have a meal together, do discussion, and go through the the alpha content together. 
Um, one other thing before we get into the alpha stuff, the alpha, alpha video today. I meant to do this at the beginning of everything I said, so this is a little bit backwards, but forgive me. Um, last week, I mentioned that we, we had a soft target to relaunch or reopen our kids' ministry on November 7th. So no sooner as I had announced that, and we'd already made some plans, that we're going to have to step that back a little bit. Uh, so unfortunately, Raquel, who leads our kids' ministry, has had to step away from that uh, responsibility prematurely. Um, and just some things going on in her life. Uh, she's going to be also going full-time with another job uh, here soon. So we're basically without a kids uh, coordinator, kids director. So we're looking to hire a part-time kids director. So that is going to delay our plans a little bit to reopen our kids program. We want to reopen it really as soon as possible because we want to better serve our own families. We want to teach our own kids the Bible. Uh, and we want to also have the opportunity to welcome new families uh, to us. Without that, we can't really welcome new families. So we need to give Raquel a big thank you. Hopefully she's watching online. Let's give her a big thank you. She's, she's done an amazing job serving as kids director for a couple of years now, part-time, and she's just done a phenomenal job. So thank you, Raquel. We're sad that she had to step down, kind of suddenly uh, had to really step back from it. Um, so, and we need to pray for her, but also pray uh, that God would, would uh, bring along somebody who could step into this role uh, with a vision to reopen our, our kids' ministry. All right, so let's put that aside. We're gonna, here's what we're going to do. We're going to watch this, this first alpha session. Is there more to life than this? And it's about a 20-minute video. The, the strange thing about this is, for those online, it's going to work a little differently for you. So you're going to see this graphic come up online. We, because of copyright issues, we can't actually stream the video on YouTube. So, but you can access it privately if you're online. So if you're in person, it's just going to roll. You, know, you don't have to do anything. But if you're online, you're going to need to go to try.church slash alpha1 and put, use the password alpha, and then you can access it. So you're going to need to open up a new window, basically watch it there, and then once it's done, rejoin us for the live stream. Okay, hopefully it's not too complicated. I know it's a bit of an extra step. Apologies for that. Um, but we're going, to, we're going to roll with it. We're going to do it, and then we're going to get back into worship uh, after this. So let's, let's roll the alpha video. I know you weren't planning on it, but congratulations for completing session one of Alpha. <laughs> if you have any big questions, you know, we'd love to talk. Hang around afterwards if you're new. Um, hang around. I'd love to greet you in the lobby if, you have que if you're not a follower of Christ or maybe your faith is struggling. I'd love to help answer any questions or pray with you or encourage you in any way. Let's think about, you know, we're, obviously we're casting this vision for Alpha to be a big thing in our church and really start this group next year, but let's think about the application of the gospel message for ourselves right now. Let's think about, let's, we're going to respond in worship in just a minute, but let's think about what Jesus has done for us. Yes, it's a message that we, we need to declare to the world and tell the world about, but it's something that we need to allow to profoundly enrich us and profoundly impact us. It is the, the free gift of Jesus' sacrifice on the cross his death and resurrection that enables us to come into this place of knowing, knowing God forever, being safe and secure in Him forever. If you don't know that today, respond. Tell us. Perhaps you're not, you're not ready to go all the way in. You're not ready to jump in. But keep taking steps. But whenever you're ready, you can respond. Perhaps today if you want prayer or you want to join a small group or you want to, you want to take a step towards Jesus or a step deeper into our church community. The key way to respond is, as Natalie talked about, is to text the word ENJOY to 94000. So that's one way you can respond. And there are different options there. But today, respond to Jesus. That's the most important thing, is that we respond in our hearts towards Jesus, that we repent of our sin, that we tell Him that we love Him and that we trust Him and that we want His help and that we want to obey Him and follow His teachings and be transformed by Him. So I invite everyone, just let's respond in worship. Let's come to Jesus today in whatever way that we need. You know what feels really good? Hitting that beautiful like button. It's just sitting right there all alone with nothing to do. Help it live to its fullest potential. You know what else feels really good? Embracing that subscribe button. It's like a puppy 
begging for attention. Just showing it a little bit of love goes a long way. Like and subscribe.